19th century Bengal is important because partly it's the capital of the British Empire is Calcutta and Bengal has for the centuries before emerged as the primary trading hub for European settlements along River Rhine Bengal. So colonial art schools were established, administration, university culture, coming later on photography around 1840s. It was a place where all painters, they could find a livelihood through art. Where the artists were open to external influences. But the bulk of them are anonymous, we don't have names for them. Some of them could have been miniature artists coming out of the provincial courts and they're working across a variety of surfaces and medium. Paper, cloth, glass and then print paper. The pool of artists could well be a circulating one, a common one. The main dating of Caligat painting is from, let us say, 1830s to 1930s. Mainly the work was that of a community called Patuas. The word comes from Pata, meaning a panel. They were itinerant picture showmen. The Patuas began to settle down around the temple of Kaligat, painting gods and goddesses. So these are street paintings. People used to come to these mandirs and take them away as mementos of their visit to this dham. Kaligat paintings were mainly collected by Europeans, missionaries and others who came. What is delightful about Kaligat painting is that, you know, the strokes that they did, the line was surging towards its destination. Besides the religious themes, they were keeping their eyes open to what was happening in the society sexual liberties, adultery, a certain effeminacy, a certain profligacy of lifestyles. And where painters are trying to find a foothold in a world that is very rapidly transforming. Unlike the mass-produced Kalighat painting and prints, these oil paintings are probably done for specific commissions. hanging in some of the North Kolkata mansions of the merchant elite of that region. Sometimes you have stage curtains appearing in these paintings, so they're directly taken from popular theatre. You often have a Brindavan-like backdrop being brought in for a Radha Krishna theme. You have a Darbar backdrop being brought in for a disrobing of Draupadi and you have a photo studio-like backdrop being brought in for Shiva's and Parvati's holy family. I would say there is so much creative juxtaposition. They never really drew a shape like a woman was. Faces were always accentuated. There you have nice large faces, big eyes, aquiline noses, and large jhumkas and balis, all worn at the same time. Oh, there's a nice gold selvage to the chunis. The ghagras obviously are very large, which they always used to be. The midriff appears. There is no attempt at modesty here. So the 19th century, uh, late 18th, 19th, is a time when across regions, you have painters adapting to new medium like glass. But these glass paintings, which seem to have a Chinese connection, again are very interesting because the iconography is so similar. It's just that the backdrop and the medium and the techniques have changed.
but what happened was that the print revolution brought images be available cheaply in the market this placed the demand for that these artists would have catered to my great regard for bengal uh, of that period and the particularly folk artists that they were watching and created such wonderful painting for me they were the first moderns